Hello and good evening and welcome to the Hemingway Jones Live Fountain Pen Show. How is everyone on a lovely, lovely evening? Hope you guys are all doing well. So we have a really interesting show for you this evening. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. There's quite a bit going on in my world and a lot of fun stuff to kind of share with you. Not the least of which is all those pens that I have that I feel like I am going to pass on, possibly sell, or, you know, whatever I do. I think it's time to give some away and sell some and just sort of refresh the whole fleet a little bit. So uh, just bear me with me a second. I, I can't see the comments. I want to see if I can get those up. Okay, I have the comments. So a big part of the channel this evening is going to be me going through the collection and weeding it out, culling the herd, if you will. It's a farewell to fountain pens this evening. You can't keep all of them forever. And I'm going to say why. I'm going to comment on which ones just aren't really working for me anymore or ones I just simply don't use or haven't inspired me. Now, the one big caveat is I tend to hold on to these things for the channel because you guys know I'm going to do a top 10 list. I'm going to do something and I'm going to wish I had whatever pen it was that I just gave away or sold. But you probably will see some of these up on Instagram. So that's a big part of the show. Also wanted to show you some new things I'm working on in regards to my handwriting. Decided to really give my handwriting some extra effort. Um, Andrew, by the way, says, finally got my Egyptomania. You better not get rid of that one. I would never get rid of my Egyptomania. That pen is definitely one of my favorites. But there are some that are taking up space, frankly. And part of it is that I filled my third Girolojo pen holder. And I'm just asking myself how many pens I really want to own. You know what I mean? Do I really want to get into a hundred pens or more? Um... I'm not sure, so I will probably let some go. So I am working on a few things, not just videos, but a couple of ideas to make my handwriting a bit better. I recently did a video over the weekend that is scheduled for the end of June on the pen that I've been using lately, the uh, Mont Blanc 149 with the calligraphy nib. So I've really, really sort of, I don't even luxuriate in this pen right now. I am learning how to use it, how to also just write with it without flex and just enjoying the process. But within that, I came up with this idea and I think you'll enjoy it. In fact, why don't we lead off with that and then we'll get into the other one in a minute when we go through the whole collection. Ellie J says your handwriting in your last letter was amazing, HJ. Thank you very much, Ellie J. I appreciate that. So what Ellie J is referring to, if you missed it, is that if you join the channel, because membership's available, and you become either an Illuminati or a Cognoscenti member, you can exchange letters with me and then there's a whole pen pal system of folks at Cognoscenti and Illuminati level that you can talk to just like you do in the chat. And write letters and everything else. I actually just typed my first letter to someone. My hand was in a bad way and I was having trouble writing. And someone mentioned that they just bought a typewriter. So I saw that as an opening. So I, I typed my first letter. But I also included a handwritten a letter as well because I, I didn't want them to feel that they weren't getting you know the full Hemingway Jones 
treatment and um i just suffered through it but but that's a fun one so if you'd like to exchange letters either become a cognoscenti or illuminati member and many of the folks that are in the chat right now are in that group and some of which i've exchanged many letters so really interesting stuff okay i promised to show you what one of the things i'm working on okay so by the way do you guys remember that that cam that i had a few weeks back it's a different one than i'm using now i sorry for the wobbliness but i want to make sure you can see this so i am selling the other cam and i'm keeping this one so evidently my iphone can act as an external camera and it's much better i think than the um cam but okay, so what is this? Have you seen this before? This is um, this is from the lovely folks at Estherbrook, and I believe it's called Write Your Own Story. Yeah, Write Your Story Journal. It has a lovely. If it's not real leather, it certainly feels like it. Uh, cover, and it's done in partnership with. Um, Betty Soldi, who you've probably seen on Instagram. Soldi means um, money, by the way, in Italian. So beautiful um, calligraphy on here, modern calligraphy. This is a bit more traditional, nice gold, very lovely. So what happens to me as someone who's online with um, a pen show and all that is that I get stuff like this and I really quite like it. But I don't often have an occasion to use this unless I use it for the show. And this is almost too nice, right? To just sort of do my just regular handwriting experiments like I do when I'm producing the show. And I use these for my journals. This is from Bottega Obscura. Lovely journal. Has my initials embossed on there. And lovely accents. I can show you this one because I haven't written in it yet. But very nice, beautiful, bright letters. Um, looks like a bit of ink got in there somehow. <laughs> but it's uh, it's definitely not used yet. This Ouroboros on here. This is Bottega Obscura. But anyway, I digress. So this one I really love from Estherbrook. I wanted to use it. So what I decided to do, and maybe I'm crazy but maybe I'm on to something. Or maybe I'm crazy and I'm on to something. But what I decided is, you know how when you're looking at other people's handwriting, and it might be in a style that's traditional or it might be their own particular handwriting, and it just has a quality. And maybe you want to incorporate it into your own writing. Maybe you don't. But if you do, wouldn't it be cool to create a library of it? Of like other people's handwriting and I don't mean printing PDFs and pasting it in what I mean is you go and you find other people's handwriting and then you emulate it so it got off to a bad start because I I pressed down entirely too much on my flex nib here but handwriting in cursive style and reference attempts to gather copy and learn from examples of historic penmanship, codified into a font for the continued practiced practice of stylistic handwriting. So I intentionally made it one of those wordy titles that you would find in a 19th century book because I thought it was charming. So I came up with this and this is what I've done. Okay, so some of it is my handwriting practice like this um which if you see um, you know it's getting a little bit better but here you get into some more stylized versions that i was copying from other sources and uh, i really like this lowercase um h i was really practicing that and i want my c's to have a bit more of a cresting wave i think a lowercase c even an uh, uppercase c should look like hokusai don't right the um the wave off the coast of Kanagawa um, with Mount Fuji in the background. 
That's what your C should look like, I think. And I've accomplished it a few times here, and I feel pretty, pretty happy about that. Um, some different A's. I don't use this sort of kidney bean shaped A, um, but you see it in a lot of places. So I went to some historic documents and some of which I've written down where they came from. Um, like, let me see. I think I skipped a page. Here we go. So I found this journal of however one says this, Mirabu Lamar from 1835. And I sort of wrote it down almost like a font of every letter I could find in this chap's handwriting. And there were some interesting ones. These G's are kind of wild. I don't even know what they are. But I can assure you that's what they look like. These B's were really interesting. I, I do a version of this A. But this person used both A's. Which I thought was really interesting. Because, um, you know, you think that... People who with good handwriting are consistent, but this person wasn't particularly consistent, which I found really charming. The E ran off a bit, but I liked both of them. Um, this was me just working on the T. Uh, I have a T in my own name, but um, I do something similar occasionally. Um, these W's, I don't really like these W's, but from 1835, you see some of these. And then here I am practicing again. You see, I'm really hung up on that H. Lots of that. And the D's sometimes have loops and sometimes don't. But, so there you have it. Uh, let's show some more. Shall we? Shall we? Oh, I see lots of nice uh, comments. Thanks, guys. Uh, appreciate the kind words. By the way, thanks for all the likes. The likes help to boost the live. So, if you don't mind, and you can hit the like button if you're enjoying what you're watching. I appreciate it. All right, so once again now, here there were some really cool linkages between words. I copied this exactly as I saw it. I quite liked how that T went right into that F. I thought that was really, really brilliant. So very nice there. And that was from a letter from 1940, which had some interesting things like an, an I that went right into the had word. And these interesting T's that never crossed or never really did anything, which were pretty interesting. Thanks for the likes, guys. I really appreciate it. And some more um, copy there. Um, so then I decided to go right to the source of handwriting and take a look at uh, Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> why not? Why not just go to Thomas Jefferson? And by the way, Thomas Jefferson did not have the best handwriting. I went to his handwritten draft of the Declaration of Independence, and I found some really interesting things. There's that G again, so that's definitely an 18th century G. There were some really interesting stylized Fs that wrap it up like a pretty present with a little bow in the center. And I quite like that, I think it's charming. There's actually another F somewhere that has it almost like triangle head from um, Silent Hill, which I thought was cool too. That might be further. So I will, f I'll try to find that now that I've built it up. Let me see. I've built it up so I need to find it, but it was a very stylized F. Here it is. So this reminds me of Triangle Head from Silent Hill, I think it is. Isn't that a cool F? So I found that from a letter from 1940. But okay, back to Thomas Jefferson. Um, he does this kidney bean A, but it doesn't quite meet. It, it seems to come up around, uh, actually probably down, up and around, or it starts at the top and goes that way, most likely. And some interesting Ds. And then this capital G was a lot of fun. But what he really did that I loved, this is how he did his THs. And I have one of those in my name. Um, my actual name. So pretty interesting. And this D, which is really interesting, it's as if this D was caught in a very high wind. And its mast is being blown leeward. 
So very interesting. Oh, we also did a really cool stylized K, whereas it normally has a bow at the top. This one had a sharp, almost print-like quality. So brilliant, really brilliant. So then going from there, Amy Alphabet, great comment, critiquing the writing of the Founding Fathers. I'm so here for this. Yeah, have we, let me ask you all, and thanks for all the likes. Have we really reached a high level of nerdiness here? I hope so. And I hope to always pierce that ceiling every time we come to it. But yeah, we were critiquing Thomas Jefferson's handwriting. But it, it's really interesting. I mean, look at that. Jay's use with a little u, um, loop. You know what? I should mention this. He did an S that looks like a capital, but it was lowercase. And it would connect like that. But then he also did the traditional S. So it's another example of inconsistency, which um, I like because we all know about foolish inconsistencies being the hobgoblin of small minds or little minds. I always forget. But look at that. Isn't that really interesting, that stylized S? And then here it is like this, slightly different. So very, very cool. Very interesting stuff. So then we go to the actual Declaration of Independence, which I imagine was done by a Scrivener. We probably know who he is. I don't know who he is. I should have probably Googled that before I went live, but that's okay. So I did notice that it was almost like a Mandela effect because in my memory of the Declaration of Independence and being a kid from Philadelphia, I had one of those realistic um, facsimiles of the original Declaration of Independence on the crinkly paper that has that ancient smell and comes in a roll. The very one that Nicolas Cage picked up at Independence Hall and National Treasure and, and they pretended the real one was a fake one. You, you remember all that? I mean, I had that as a child. Um, I probably bought it in 1976 when the country turned 200 years old. So in my memory, the original declaration was written with a very uniform script, almost a font-like approach to handwriting. And there were very few flourishes, except at the beginning and at the end. But that's not the case. When you actually look at it, which I guess I never really gave it that kind of look until I started this project. There's some interesting stuff like this N, which I, I did an okay job of capturing. The declaration is much more uniform. Mine looks a little less so, but use your imagination. We'll see. But the N does this beautiful St. Louis style arch that terminates about three quarters of the way to the word. This C, though not inspired by Hokusai, is still rather beautiful and elegant. And I quite like this W. It's very close to how I do my own W's, which I know you guys have seen my W's because I always show them when I demonstrate my flex pens. So another beautiful thing was how this F runs into this T. And you only get a sort of implication, if you will, of a cross it's not a true cross and i love that look at this h i mean wow wow look at that huh i would say wow to write like that but i actually did write like that because i copied it in here but you should see it in the original it's brilliant the other thing that the scrivener does is makes really round large eyes for the um for dotting the eyes. So absolutely brilliant job there to that incredible artisan. And you see it again here. So really, really lovely stuff going on here. Beautiful stuff. And then I kind of was practicing it. So, so that's my new project. I'm just getting started. Here's some more. I took some of the Things I really liked. This is a G I found there, which I really quite liked. 
this really lovely, almost mid-century bee, but it's clearly not because it's from the 18th century, but really gorgeous. And then two different A's once again. And um, yeah, just some other stuff I was working on. So I imagine at some point this will be much further along. Oh, look, stickers. How nice. I love stickers. So this book is from Esterbrook. And it's, it's um, dotted, which I normally don't write on. But I'm enjoying it. It actually sort of helps you get your slant better. You can imagine a diagonal line. So, pretty nice. So, I think I'll probably also be using this for B-roll. So, you're going to see this a lot. Okay? So, there we go. I hope you guys enjoyed that because I'm enjoying making it. And, and can I tell you something else? Usually when I'm writing, I'm journaling and I'm pouring my heart out. It's fun to just write and not think. Or to think more about the shape of swoops and, and curves rather than some philosophical thing I'm working on. So I hope you enjoyed that. Now I'm going to set this aside and I'll give you a palette cleanser of some of my daughter's art. Look at this. This is a portrait of me. And um, this is shading because the sun was over here. So she did that and then she did this portrait of herself with a serious face because she specifies which faces. So there you have it. Some of my daughter's art. Okay. Enough of that. Or is it enough of that? I don't know. Let me go to your comments. And then we'll go to the pen collection and I'll single out those pens that you will see on Instagram up for sale soon. Let me see. Claire Coco. Hi, Claire. How are you? Nice to see you. I see Claire over on Instagram quite a bit. Will you have the link in your description for the journal? Your writing is great and fun. Thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Will I have the link in there? I can put the link in there. Yes, I, I can do that. Um, if you don't see it there in a reasonable amount of time, remind me, but it should be there. Thanks. Uh, Amy Alphabet. Wait, she is six. Yes, my daughter is six. And um, she's doing really good with concepts like shading and, and trying to do realistic faces. I think it's really, really beautiful. Really, really beautiful. So, really good stuff. Let me see. Lots of comments to go through. And thanks for all the likes, guys. I see them come up. All the thumbs. I appreciate it. Always good. All right. So, I guess the gentleman that did the work on the... Declaration of Independence was Timothy Matlack, which I suppose I should have known. Oh, Claire's doing some traveling. Good for you. Shaq MD's here. Hello, Shaq. Always a pleasure. You guys, Shaq has his own channel. He does handwriting. As a matter of fact, I'm really glad that Shaq joined now and not when I was showing my handwriting because it pales in comparison, my friends. But always good to see Shaq. Um, while we're speaking about travel, I will be traveling to New York City the week of June 17th. I think that's the Saturday. So we're going to New York City for a couple reasons. One is my daughter, um, when we were all talking about where we wanted to go this summer, she wanted to see the Temple of Isis at the Met. So who am I deny her the Temple of Isis at the Met? So we will be heading there. And also my wife and I, we've been married like 10 years. We've been together for like 13. We've never been to New York City together except to drive through. Which is crazy because we've been a lot of other places together. So we're going to go to the Morgan Library. We're going to go to the Met. We're going to go to the, Bo uh, not the Boston, the uh, New York Public Library. Of course, Bryant Park. We'll be at all the Japanese stationery stores. We'll be at all the used bookstores. So it's going to be super fun. You guys know I'm going to be filming a lot of 
B-roll, which will be a lot of fun. And I'll be featuring some of the places that I love there. Um, I'm sure I'll have some food at the Oyster Bar, one of my favorite restaurants, and some other places. So it'll be a lot of fun. And you guys, if you're in New York or around New York, I may do a meetup. I thought it might be fun. My daughter goes to bed very early. And, um, you know, my wife and I will go out usually separately when we travel. Um, you know, meet separate groups of friends or whatnot. So I thought maybe one night um, meet up somewhere fun. And uh, maybe at a pub somewhere and have some pen chat in person. If anyone's there. Ellie J says, your six-year-old asked to see a museum. I am her new biggest fan. Yeah, she's she's like that. I mean, she's definitely my wife's daughter, you know. She loves museums. She's kind of begging us to go back to the Gardner Museum. So, yeah, she's um she's really something that kid. Okay. I think perhaps we should go through the pens. So, let me pull my pen holders. And we're just going to do it live time, which is fun, right? And see which I can part with. Shall we? Thanks for the likes. You guys are really generous with the likes tonight. Thank you very much for that. It means a lot. Okay, so here we have a bunch of Mont Blanc, as you guys probably know. Um, this is high on the list of pens I would never part with. Matter of fact, it almost hurts my my heart a little bit that it's in here. It should be in my hand. I love this pen. If, you, if you're not familiar with it, this is the Egyptomania. It, it is such an interesting, such a weird pen, but such an amazing writing experience. And one of my true favorites. So that's high on the list. This is the 149 here. And what's this space? Well, this is where the 146 goes. It's out now because I'm using it to work on my handwriting. And then I have a bunch of vintage pens. There's a couple in here. I mean, I do like all these. They definitely have their own quality. This one, I forget the actual model number. I'd have to look it up, but it's left oblique. I would probably hold on to it because it's my only left oblique. But to be honest, I'm not that crazy about it. It's borderline. Okay, Cartier Diablo, that's staying. Have you guys seen a Cartier Diablo? Boy, if I go through every pen, we're going to be here all night. And I'm trying to keep this pithy. Look at the Chinese lacquer on this pen, ladies and gentlemen. Isn't that gorgeous? So this is a Cartier Diablo, Chinese lacquer. Probably my prettiest pen, or certainly in the neighborhood. You can see the C for Cartier. I guess it kind of matches. I'm wearing my Cartier watch tonight. Um, very elegant pen, very beautiful nib, softer nib, um, suspiciously like a Mont Blanc. I think it is. Um, the only failing with this pen really is that it has a converter. Um, I would prefer it were piston fill, especially if I had paid full price for it. But you know what? Cartier fountain pens are really cool. They're underappreciated, underspoken about. You almost never see them spoken about on the internet in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I'm happy to mention it at any chance. Look at the look at that. Look how beautiful that is. All right, guys, you got to stop me because you know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do this all night. But I don't think you guys mind. This I would never get rid of. It's pretty great. And also. The mythos, or mythos as I like to call it. I always name pens my own thing. I quite like this pen, but to be honest, I haven't written with it very much lately. I need to kind of bust it out. Um, sadly, you get distracted by other pens. Pens come in, and you get distracted. Peniter's awesome. The, this one is really great. This is another pen I haven't written with in a couple weeks, but I would never part with it. It's it's delightfully insane. I quite like it. 
this this is this is this is kind of a tough one guys so this is a sailor 1911 I never use this pen like ever but it's beautiful and it's kind of sad that I don't by the way doesn't it look really interesting next to the uh, 146 but um, could I part with this pen I could this is one I could sell but I'm not going to and I'll give you a couple of reasons Reason number one is that I don't have too many sailor pens and I can just see needing it for the channel. I also don't have too many 21 karat gold nibs and this one has that. Also, it does write so smoothly. It it's, kind of reminds me of the Pilot Custom 823 nib. It's really amazing. And then the last reason is I'm thinking about leaving this in my office for those times which are frequent when I forget to bring a pen with me. And if I forget to bring a pen, then the only pens I have are my Lilliput in my bag and my hover pen on my desk, which I am not that enamored of compared to an actual fountain pen. So... But the Lilliput's great, but it's a lot of screwing all day, you know. So that one I would get rid of, except that I need it for the channel. Pilot Kakuno? No, I love this pen. I couldn't part. Um, Metropolitan? Yeah, I could, I could sell this in a heartbeat. I mean, there's a couple reasons why I wouldn't. One is, this comes up on the channel a lot. It's one of the best beginner pens. I need an example for using on the channel. And also, it's only a $12 pen, so it wouldn't make financial sense to sell it. The Pilot Falcon. Well, yes. Yeah, I would, I'd get rid of this in a heartbeat. This is one of my biggest disappointments in pens, to be honest. I find that it, it's just, I don't know, it's just not that great of a nib. Uh, whoopsie it's um I am thinking about giving it another shot though because I've learned a lot about fountain pens and about flex pens since I've really used this but for a 200 hour pen this is a very plasticky pen it feels kind of cheap but the nib is nice uh, but I would get rid of it but I'm not going to because you might see a video on this soon and also because I think Wear and Jewel has the Dracula ink and it looks so great in that pen. It's so great, guys. The Pilot E95S, an underappreciated masterpiece. I would never get rid of this pen. I love this pen. Reminds me of a mid-century cosmetic product. So gorgeous, so elegant. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, so this is the Twisby Diamond 580. No, it's not. This is a Twisby Eco. Um, I was about to say I would get rid of the Twisby Diamond 580 because it's just not that much better than an Eco. So... I would never get rid of the Eco. This is a Twisby Vac 700R. Look at that, so gorgeous, huh? And you, can you guys tell which ink this is? Yamabudo. Yamabudo. Never get rid of that one, but here it is, okay. So, this Diamond 580, it's been with me a long time and it was a gift from family. So. I would hold on to this one. But in general, if it didn't have sentimental value, if you already have a Twisby Eco, you don't need a 580. Yeah, it's a nicer pen. It is. You can clearly see there's more going on. It's more heavy duty, everything else. But is it better? Like, is it? does it give you a demonstrably better writing experience? Not really. 
and it's a lot more expensive. But if you do get it, why not get it in Iris? This was sent to me by Brendan. Brendan Schmidt of Atlas Stationers. One of the loveliest people I know. He sent me this. Really kind. He also has a fine nib. I don't have too many fine nibs. So here's one. The Diplomat. Aero Diplomat, huh? Love the design. Makes a nice noise. If you like noises, that's nice. Very nice. So, I'd let this one go if I didn't need it for the channel. But I think I'd probably want to film with it at some point. It is a very well made pen. Made of aluminium. Which is a lovely material for pens. Let's try another one. Shall we? Oop, sorry guys. It's hard not to bang things around. There's not a lot of room here. Miss Marilyn Darling is not a fan of metal grip sections. Thanks for the likes. I see more likes. Thank you. Ooh, Pelican. I'm going to show you this one because it's pretty... Pelican M600 Souverain Tortoise. Look at that, huh? My wife bought me this for my birthday. A couple years back, I filmed with this at the Boston Public Library. I would never part with this. I'd never part with the Pelican M200 either, even though this pen hates me. It likes to come apart and leak into my pocket but i do love it although it hates me maybe one day we'll find common ground my two lamis love them both this one has a calligraphy nib their calligraphy nib is actually just brilliant it it's really fun to write with this has the curse of italic have you guys seen it now the the cam's not super great for picking up things close so i'm gonna have to put it here but I'll put my, my hand behind it. But do you see that? Isn't that pretty? is that a gorgeous nib? Oh, look, if I do this, I can get closer. Isn't that something? Curse of Italic. I find myself writing with this quite a bit. And why is this one white? Because this is what my wife used at university in York. So I got the white one in tribute to her. Although I think hers had black clip and mine has chrome. Conklin Dorograph, very nice. Conklin All-American, um, not a fan. I'm not a fan of this pen. This is one you'll probably see on Instagram soon. It's too big, too chunky. Although I kind of like the stub. The Yovo stub nib is nice. It's pretty, but um, I never, I can't remember the last time I've written with this pen. Similarly, the Ranga and Fountain Pen Revolution uh, Madras pen, which I really like, but it's just too chunky, but it's so pretty and it's ebonite. I probably won't get rid of it, but I probably should. What I really wish is it were more slim. I'm very much into slim, elegant pens these days. The pendulum has swung with me. Um, I'd love to see... I, I, I should check their stock and see if they have one that's ebonite that has a much thinner diameter. I think that would do it for me. If it were more elegant. Okay. These are two Himalayas. Um, do you know about the Fountain Pen Revolution Himalaya and its flex nib? One of the best buys in fountain pens, in my opinion. It's absolutely brilliant. It's fun to write with. It has great, comfortable flex. This is the shape of their flex nib. You can see it's carved out on the sides. 
It's really pretty. It's really nice. In fact, I just did a recent video on Flex. I bring this up. Um, these go on sale quite a bit. And when they do, they're just so affordable. Such great pens. Highly recommend them. If you don't have one and you like Flex or you want to see if you like Flex, this is a great place to try. Great, great, great place to try. Okay, Blue Dew, similarly. Blue Dew's nibs are a little scratchy, but no one does Flex like a Blue Dew. This is basically like one of those zebra nibs that you've seen out there. It just flexes like a madman. You just have to be careful you don't spring the times. But absolutely. Oh, I, I was too ambitious with that. There we go. Gorgeous. Incredible flex. So fun to write with. Yeah. That's a good pen. Matter of fact, I have paper. Paper. Look, this was in my pocket. I was doing B-roll in Salem. It was in my pocket. And it just got gross. Sort of. Got hot. I think there's ink in here. Let's see, shall we? Oops. Too far. That gives you some idea. I did mess up there. I don't have it at the best angle, but you know, that's how it is. It happens sometimes. It's not inexhaustible by any means. It will kind of run out if you um, flex it too far for too long. But that's kind of part of flex writing. You just kind of have to wait until it catches up that's pretty dramatic right isn't that fun my posture here is terrible but i just want you to see how this thing works oh, railroad railroad too far well that is kind of my fault it's kind of hard to do it when you're holding it in in midair. So imagine if you had some talent, what you could do. So there you have it. Super fun pen. You could do a lot of practicing, a lot of cool stuff. All right, I'm going to move on. Don't want to lose you all. I'm trying to stay focused. Thank you, Marilyn, darling. That's very kind. Puppet Access says that that nib has zero tipping. I think it has negative tipping. It's so true. Do you hear it too? It's very scratchy on the page, but it's not, it's not, it's very enjoyable still to write with, and it's still a lot of fun. So here we have a Navalar pen with huge ink capacity and is absolutely beautiful. This is a Chicago special edition. Brendan Schmidt sent this to me. Lovely guy. Um, very nice nib. Incredible writer. I don't use this enough. My one downside on this is you cannot post it. You'd have to duct tape it on there. Um, I'm okay not posting pens, but I feel like it needs to be said that it cannot post. But it's so pretty. It'd be hard to uh, part with this. It's a beautiful pen. Plus, I may do a comparison one day between that and the Horizon that Navalar sent me a few weeks back. The um, one that you can post, actually, if you so desire. I believe this is one of the first or the first Navalars to be able to post. So, my only criticism of this is the wavy cap. Not that crazy about it, but that's aesthetics, right? Here's another pen I could part with. 
even though I don't know I do kind of like this <laughs> this is the Y studio I, I, I couldn't part with this this is a cool pen <sighs> you know why I can't part with this it just it has this quality about it and what it reminds me of is like watch this guys watch the way this thing closes Ooh, is that nice and look how well it's machined with the facets. It reminds me, back in the 80s, when I was really into martial arts, there was this sword that was faceted like this, sort of. And it closed into a block of wood. And you would pull the handle out, and it would be um, a sword. Like, it wasn't a katana. It was the ninja sword. And I forget what that's called, but it's straight, where a katana has a curve. And this just reminds me of that. It makes me feel young. It, it reminds me of being in Philadelphia, at Asian world of martial arts, buying nunchaku and, and wooden swords back in my martial art days. And it just has a quality like that. It also has this neat um, effect where you're supposed to scratch away the paint while you use it to give it a bit of like a wabu-sabi, a little age, a little... A little flaw if you will so so I thought I could part with it I cannot here's what I could I'll go right to this this um this Kaveco um, collection special red I, I love it I mean they were very nice they gave this to me um, the Kaveco people are really nice I always forget how to open it here we go has a beautiful Kaveco nib. It's a fun collectible pen, but I really don't use it. But it's very elegant, very light. Um, I could probably part with it. I'm not going to <laughs> because I'm sure it'll come up. It's the same with the Supra. This, these are great pens, and I recommend these. If you like the Lilliput, the Supra is like the Lilliput on steroids. I mean, look at that. A big, yeah, I couldn't part with that. Look at the giant Kaveco nib. How awesome is that? What I need to do is ink this bad boy up and start writing with it again. I have the converter. I could put some really fun ink in here. Yeah, scratch that. I would never get rid of this. It's cool. Plus, here's, a, here's something. I don't know if you know this about this pen. You can take this bit apart, right? You can get rid of that. And then you, you put this in there. Then it becomes smaller. Although with the converter, you're not really. It's kind of in the way. <laughs> but if you had a cartridge, it works much better. And now you have a much smaller pen. So that's kind of neat. And then if you want a full-size pen to write with, because you can write with this, but it's a little awkward. You just have to screw this on. It, it's not that easy for me. There we go. It's a bit like a hobby kit. So there you go. Now you got a classic size pen with a giant, a giant nib. I mean, that's a big nib. That's like the size of the 149 nib, maybe even bigger. It's pretty great. So yeah, this is a pretty great pen. I mean, Kaveco makes some of my favorite nibs. Let's put it back together, shall we? I can't remember how to do it. This goes here. This goes here. Try to be gentle. And this goes here. So that's the Supra. Pretty great pen. Oh, my fact checking comment section says that it's a number six. I thought it might be a number six, but I hesitated to say it because I wanted to make sure I was correct. So that's, if you heard hesitation in my voice, that's why. Ooh, Wolf Kate Witch, hi. Uh, anyway, I love how you talk yourself out of giving them up. I know, that's what I do. Um, here's one I did sell, guys. Um, I sold one of my brass sports. I sold one of my brass sports because the bronze sport, I was getting the bronze sport for my birthday, if you guys recall. 
only thing is it never came so now I'm just down a brass sport and I don't have a bronze sport um, but if I ever have a bronze sport it will go there otherwise I'll I'm sure something else will come along um, all of these are pretty great these are like a set this pink and blue so they have to stay and then one of these is a this is a broad this is a double broad so they have to stay all right here's one i could sell here's one you guys will see on instagram soon although look how beautiful that is oh it's so pretty but you know sometimes if it doesn't hurt it's no fun to sell but this is the Super Mega. And it is Super Mega. And it's a great pen. There's nothing wrong with it. The only thing... Does it post? It kind of posts. Not really. The only thing that's really wrong with this pen is that I'm going for more elegant. And this is so big and so bold. That cool blacked out nib though, right? That I just feel like it's it's just not right for me right now. And I'm not sure I'd ever feature it on the channel. I don't know. Do you guys would you guys watch a video of me reviewing this pen? Or could I could I come up with a a line like something more than just a review about it? I'm not sure. So yeah, there's that. This, dear friends, is a cross apogee. A cross apogee that has been brought back. It had a leaky converter and I replaced it with a new cross one. And it's fun to write with and I'm going to keep it. And it's one of my oldest pens. I've had it for a long time. Make sure you guys can see. Hmm. That doesn't look that great, huh? Let's try it again. What's Apogee? Pretty great pen. What do you guys think? So anyway, yeah, I won't be parting with this anytime soon. I quite like it. Same with the Schaefer. This was a gift from one of the lovely members. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. It's a snorkel pen. It's my only snorkel pen. Does it unscrew? I forget. Yes. <laughs> Has a nice grooved grip beautiful nib I'm not sure if there's ink in there right now I think I cleaned it I had really nice blue ink in here and then I had ox blood in here too and next to that Schaefer is a Schaefer legacy from around 20 years ago, right before Schaefer kind of got crappy. But look at that gorgeous nib. This was made in the US. It's got some girth to it, but I still like it. It's one of my oldest pens. It has a very aggressive energy to it. I like the shiny chrome. I like the diamond shaped nib and how it's inlaid into the grip. Yeah, it also writes like a maniac and it has nice flex to it. I, I quite like it. So there we go. We got one more. <laughs> Mummy Brown loves Schaefer. Me too. I'm a big Schaefer fan. I don't have enough.
by the way. I mentioned Dracula earlier. Let's find it. Here it is. So, if you remember back when I was talking about the Valenjul Dracula. That's Dracula. Creatures of the night. What sweet music they make. Isn't that great color? And, um... Bloody Brexit from Diamine above it. So super fun ones here. Witch by Starlight. So I'm getting really uh, creative with the um, inks lately. Okay. One last peg. One last um, um, box to go through. A Chiro, my friend. The legacy is chrome. It looks like silver, but it's chrome. Um, it is a lovely pen. Thanks so much. I'm glad you like those. I like those too. They're great writers. Very soft. Very, very nice one. Nice. Okay. This. Hey, I just realized I turned these around. Sometimes I go in, sometimes I go out. I forget what this pen is. I know it's from India. And it's really cool. But it's a big, it's a bit bulky. Um, but it looks like a cathedral. And I'll never part with it. Plus it was a gift. It was a gift from the lovely folks at Pen Chalet. That's right, I thought that's what it was. It's a Magna Carta. I thought that's what it was, but I was afraid to say it. Because I didn't want to be wrong. I didn't want to put out wrong information. But it's a Magna Carta. It's a crazy pen. I like crazy. Parker 51. From, I don't know, 1940s. We won't be giving that away, ladies and gentlemen. This, by the way, is one of the most underappreciated pens that has ever existed. It's a Waterman Charleston. It has a gold nib. It's got an Art Deco gold nib. It is a beautiful writer. Just an absolutely brilliant pen. I love Waterman. Cheers for that. This is the Quran, or as I like to call it, the Waterman Karen. Um, this is another one that is just so fun to write with. Inlaid nib to the grip section. I have Karub de Chipre ink in here. So, so fun. So elegant. Hey, I just realized the dishwasher's been on this whole time. I wonder if you guys can hear the dishwasher. <laughs> In the background. Usually I don't run it during the show. But someone must have hit start. So if you hear any beeps in the background. it's The dishes are done. It's very very clean. So this is an elegant writing instrument. From a much more civilized age. And Karub de Sheepa really works with it I think. It's a medium nib. This is such a classic pen. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting carried away. I could write with this all night. Brilliant pen. Kind of reminds me of the back of a Chris Craft. Have you ever seen a Chris Craft? The back sort of slopes down like that. So, super fun. All right, what else do we have here? Oh, thanks for the likes. Appreciate it. Oh, good. You guys can't hear the dishwasher. I'm so glad. I'm so glad because I certainly can. All right. So this is a Waterman Phileas. This is the Twisby of its day. It punches way above its weight. These were very cheap. I don't think they were more than $35, if that. Back around 2000 These just great pens. I have two... I'll never part with them. This one's prettier. Isn't that pretty? Have you ever seen a Phileas like this? So pretty. My attorney gave me this. 
I gave him half of my pen collection. He gave me this Phileas. Very lovely. Okay, so these are Jin Hao 82s. And I really love their colors, but I don't like either of them all that much. Um, I do like the way the avocado writes better than the banana. Um, but I never use these. But I need them for the channel, so they're not going anywhere. Um, this, yeah. This. <laughs> the Jin Hao X159. Oh, ooh. It's cruddy. Cruddy. Ooh. I just, I don't have good luck with this pen. I'm not a fan. I know a lot of you have had, but out of all my Jin Hao's, I have four of them, and only one writes perfectly. The other 82 was a little scratchy, and I did a little work on it. Oof. Here's another one of those. Oh, actually, no. You know what? I forgot I own this. I take it back. This one writes fine, too. This one writes fine. I forgot I own this. Is this one cruddy? No. Gosh, they have pretty nibs, though, don't they? Does anybody have a prettier logo than Jin Hao? I'm not sure. Mm. I just wish they'd stop disappointing me. This, th These pens I actively hate. Like this one... This is a dreadful pen. If you want to punish someone, take all their pens away and make them right with this one. It's dreadful. 159. It weighs about 50 pounds, but it has a gorgeous nib. It's gold plated. So pretty. But boy, is it dreadful. Oh, it's so bad. I look at it and I, I just, I have a natural version. This is a 450. Equally bad. This marble effect is not resin. It's just contact paper stuck on there. It's it's awful. I'm so sorry, guys. Might be an unpopular opinion, but I have to tell you how I how I see it. No one's getting rid of vintage pens, ladies and gentlemen. Shown design pocket six. Um, my wife bought me this. It's cool to have a pocket six. It's cool to have a number six nib in your pocket. So that won't be going anywhere. The Banu, uh, I like this pen. It's kind of mad. I don't break it out as often as I probably would if it wasn't so over the top. It's my only Banu. I might film with it again, so that's staying. I love my Astrobrooks. They're not going anywhere. The brush pen as well. These are Astrobrook J's. So nothing there is going. Has anyone kept score? How many are we getting rid of? Are we getting rid of any? I know we're getting rid of a couple. That's super mega. Um, here's a rose gold. Eco. Just one of the best pens out there. With a 1.1 stub. This one's brilliant. Boy, that's wet. I just filled this. Could be why. It's so smooth, guys. It's one of my fastest nibs. It's so fast, it's like a fire hose. <laughs> Look, I threw in that F we were speaking of earlier. Um, this ink, by the way, if you like it, do you like this ink? It Does anybody know what it is? I'll tell you. I won't hold you in suspense. I'll tell you. 
Krishna. I love inks from India. This is Krishna Moon View 2. Now, what's so fun about Moon View 2? I'm glad you asked. Look at that, guys. I mean, it's still a little wet, so it needs to dry for the full effect. But it's just so sheeny. It's a sheen monster. Monster sheen. Look at that, guys. It's blue. No. What do you mean? It's red. It's like that dress on the internet. Is it gold? Is it white? It's blue. It's red. It's red. It's blue. Anyway. Sheen monster. So that's a good one. Of course, pumpkin latte. That's not going anywhere. Um, what else do I have? Some fun pens over here. Got the um, Esterbrook Camden, I think this is. It's so pretty. Well... I think we've done enough damage for one night. What do you think? Did you guys enjoy that? I had a nice time going through everything. Did you enjoy it? I hope you guys did. Um, I'm sure we're going to do a lot of stuff like that again. And um, we got a lot of interesting stuff coming up on the channel, guys. And sadly, I didn't check which video is coming out on Friday. So you're going to be in suspense. But I can tell you that a video is coming up this Friday at noon there will be a new video I think it might be the top three and a half pens for Huga. I think that's what it might be but I'm not entirely sure so you it's gonna be some suspense but the Huga video is coming up I think it's this Friday so we have that to look forward to and then I did one on Jairban, which I learned so much about Jairban. They sent a care package. I unbox it and then I demonstrate it. That's super fun. And then since then I've went, I've um, decided to buy their sealing wax. And there is a huge difference between normal sealing wax and Jairban sealing wax. I think I want to throw away all the other sealing wax I have. It doesn't, it melts differently. It melts much more even. It goes on much more even. It doesn't have that sort of mottled, mottled look to it. It's very, very even as it melts and sets in. It's really nice. And I say that not as someone who's shilling for Jair Bond because I bought the wax after the fact i kind of wish i had asked for it but it's really nice yes and marilyn darling brings up the fact that it's flexible i just sent a letter to someone with a seal that has the jerobon ink so you will see that very soon and i'll probably show that on the channel which is very cool Linda Thomas says, I missed most of this episode, but enjoyed what I got to see. Well, Linda, um, I'm so glad you joined us. And the great thing is that these will stay up. When I do the live show, I leave them up. So you can always catch the replay. And I appreciate that. As many times as you'd like. I usually watch them too. I critique myself. I critique my sound everything else that's going on so always trying to get better you guys so i think we covered a lot tonight there were some things i didn't get to i wanted to get to i wanted to to um talk about some unpopular opinions i have i thought you guys would get a kick out of that were not fountain pen related things about certain movies and things i don't like that most people like and why 
I thought that would be fun. But we'll have to do it some other time. Because I feel like my voice is giving out. And I always want to give my best to you all. And I don't want to have a froggy voice in doing it. But it was lovely hanging out with you all once again. And we will be doing this again very soon. There's a new video going up on Friday. I hope you guys will catch it. And also, if you go back, check out the interview with Oshin O'Malley. And if you've watched this far and you haven't subscribed, please do. You must like the channel if you made it through an hour and ten minutes of this kind of pen talk. And I'd love to have you along on this journey with us. And if you want to do the letter exchange with us, then join the channel as a member at the Illuminati or Cognoscenti level. And we will exchange letters and it's a lot of fun. Love to see you there. I recently put a video up for members only where I critique one of my videos. It's what I tried to do on the last live show and failed. I successfully, mostly successfully, did it for the members behind the scenes. So that's the kind of content you get back there too. So it's just a lot of fun. There's always something going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Love you all. Really appreciate it. It's going to be a great summer. We're going to do some great things together. Be on the lookout for some really interesting videos. I'm pushing the boundaries. My fountain pen review in the style of Wes Anderson is coming up. That should be fun. There's a lot of things you guys are really going to enjoy. So thank you all for being here. And we will see each other again very soon. Maybe in New York, but certainly further up the road. So take care and thanks.